Hello and welcome to reading only sad books for a week because this week we're choosing tears over joy. Yay. Someone please mail me boxes of tissues because I'm gonna need them. So I pulled four sad books off my bookshelf that I've been wanting to read for a while. I don't know if I'm gonna get through all four books this week, hopefully at least three, but we'll see. And they're kind of varying degrees of sad. The absolute saddest one is A Little Life. I feel like everyone has heard of this book by this point. The trigger warnings for this book are literally a novel within themselves. They are so long. And I have just heard that this book is a lot. It's heavy. I've seen videos of people fall into this book, having entire miserable breakdowns. But I've also heard that the book is so good. One of my friends read it and said she thought it was like a masterpiece, like her favorite book of all time. So I'm both excited and scared to read it. Then we've got Darling Venom. I'm not sure how how much of a tearjerker this book is or not, but based on the summary, it sounds really heavy. It is a romance, but it also sounds like it deals with some really tough topics. I looked up some Goodreads reviews and a good amount of people said they cried in this book. So this one is high on my want to read list. The other one that's highest on my want to read list is If He Had Been With Me. I've been hearing so much about this book. The summary of it doesn't sound very sad to me. It's about Autumn and Finn, who used to be inseparable, but then something changed and they do their best to ignore each other. And then for the last book, I've owned this book for a while, so I really need to read it. It's called Out of Darkness. This book is a young adult historical fiction novel, and it's about an African-American boy and a Mexican-American girl falling in love in East Texas in the 1930s. And I feel like it is gonna break my heart because it deals with fear, hope, love, and time times of unrelenting racism. So yeah, these are our four options this week. I think I'm gonna start with Darling Venom because I think it's gonna be the least sad. And I'm thinking of easing our way into sadness. Starting off sad, but no, a little life sad, you know? Also, this is your warning to look up all trigger warnings for all of these books. They all deal with some heavier subject matter, and I will also be talking about heavier subject matter in this video, starting literally right now with the summary of this book, which is pretty heavy. This book is about Helen and Charlotte who both decide that they are going to end their lives, and they go up to this roof to do it, and that's when they run into each other on Valentine's Day, and they decide not to take the plunge, but agree to check on each other every Valentine's Day until school ends. Same time, one roof, two restless souls. So they keep that promise but then on the fourth year something happens and then on the cover it also says my first love ended in tragedy my second began with his brother so i'm assuming on that fourth year when something happens it doesn't end well i have a pretty good guess for why it doesn't end well i feel like we can all guess but yeah okay let's start it oh oh my gosh also these pages are really cool i love 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 when authors do like cool chapter pages Oh wow, I just finished chapter one and I obviously knew we were going to be having the heading to the rooftop plot point, but I did not think we would just jump straight into that moment. Chapter one is literally Charlotte heading up to the roof. Yeah, I thought we were gonna ease into that, but uh, mm, I already want to give Charlotte a hug. And I don't know if they've said exactly how old she is, but it seems like she's pretty young, which also makes it extra sad. No, I'm on page. 51 and what just happened like I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming because it's literally basically in the summary, but I'm still sad. I was really falling in love with Kellen. It's so sad because I feel like it was so preventable. I don't know like maybe it wasn't maybe it was gonna happen no matter what, but no, I feel like it could have been prevented if Kellen had just been dealt a different hand in life and had more people who supported him. This is already so sad. Oh my gosh. I'm on to part two, the imperfections. Ooh, also Charlotte is 22 in part two where we just left off at the end of part one, she was 18. So we're going forward in time. I changed page 76 and Charlotte has run into Tate, Kellen's older brother. And I'm guessing the romance is gonna be between Charlotte and Tate since we got the my second love began with his brother on the cover. But currently Charlotte hates Tate because Kellen always complained to her about Tate and basically blamed Tate for a lot of the problems in his life. So it's very enemies to lovers vibe right now. Also unrelated to the plot, but I hate in books when 
authors like overly describe what the characters are wearing, I feel like it can become outdated really fast or even if it's not an outdated style, but it's just not like my cup of tea. I'm just like, oh, I don't want to picture the characters wearing that. And in this book, Charlotte has a very like gothic punk, like eccentric style, which is super fun. So it's like fun to read the descriptions of the outfits, but some of the outfits I'm like, ooh, that does not sound cute. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little dinner break and I'm cooking yeah. sweet umami beef bowls from Every Plate, who is the sponsor of today's video. At first, I was skeptical thinking meal kits were gonna be really expensive, but I'm now convinced that you can get the same deliciousness as going to the grocery store or eating out at a much lower cost. I love that Every Plate meals are 25% cheaper than grocery shopping or 58% cheaper than eating out at your typical fast casual restaurant. So you can literally save so much time and money and still get delicious high quality meals. I also love that it's it's really customizable. You can swap proteins, sides, or add a protein to a veggie dish so you can have exactly the meal that you want. And there are 25 recipes to choose from each week. It takes all the time out of recipe hunting, and I think it's just so fun to go in and pick your meals every single week. Plus, there are up to 22 sides, snacks, desserts, and more. Danny and I have gotten so busy on weeknights, so every plate has really been a lifesaver in allowing us to cook in 30 minutes or less, especially if we tag team it and cook together. Get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering my promo code justally149. Again, that's 149 per meal at everyplate.com with my code justally149. I just read a page 180 and oh my gosh, something just happened. It is a spicy scene, kind of, not really. I don't know how to categorize it, but um, wow, this book is kind of wild for this scene. All I'll say is that if I was Charlotte in this scene, I would simply pass away from embarrassment. I would cease to exist. I would be deceased from the biggest embarrassment of my life. Also, Tate is a gynecologist, which has to do with this scene. I'm not gonna say any more because spoilers, but this book is a roller coaster. I have been reading all morning because I am simply obsessed. I'm on page 266. I am flying through this book. And I love how it deals with like so many different emotions. Tate and Charlotte are like starting to have some feelings for each other, but they feel so guilty about it because Charlotte was originally close with Kellen, Tate's brother. And they also feel so guilty about what Kellen did so many years ago. So it deals with that guilt and grief and love and wanting to change things. And yeah, just such a big range of emotions. They also found this thing, I wanna say it, but I don't know what spoiler, that I think is gonna give us a lot more information about Kellen. And I don't know, I just have a feeling that there's something we don't know. I don't know if that's true, but I just feel like there's gonna be, I don't know if it's gonna be a twist or a reveal or just like more information on why Kellen did what he did. I just read page 302 and oh my gosh, I hate Leah, Charlotte's sister. Basically, Leah did something like really great and good for Charlotte a really long time ago when Charlotte was a kid, a literal kid. And Leah is literally holding it over Charlotte's head forever. Like she's acting like Charlotte owes her her life, owes her everything because she did this one good thing for her. Like if you do something good for somebody, they should show you like appreciation and thanks, but you should also do it selflessly. And also one really good deed doesn't mean they owe you for the rest of their life, especially when they were a child when you did that good deed for them. It's just ridiculous. And I don't know if Charlotte and her sister are gonna make up or not, but even if they do, I still feel like I'll still hate Leah. I don't know. It's the next day and I finished Darling Venom. For my rating, I used to feel like quarter stars were just like very extra and unnecessary, but I think I'm at a point with how many books I've read that I need quarter stars just to further distinguish my thoughts on all these different books. So I'm gonna say, 4.25 stars. As I talked about yesterday, I love like the huge complex range of emotions and topics that this book deals with from mental health, grief, guilt, love, forgiveness of yourself and others, hope. So much emotion and range of emotions in this book. It definitely pulled on my heartstrings. I didn't cry in this book. I personally wouldn't say 
it's a tearjerker, but it does deal with heavy subject matter. So as far as my sadness rating, I'm gonna say two and a half out of five tears. Overall, I really loved our main character, Charlie's personality. She was like very bold and spunky, but also like cared about everyone so much and would just like never give up on Tate. My only like tiny, 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 tiny complaint with their romance is that I did feel like the vast majority of like their conversations surrounded around Kellen, Tate's little brother, which makes sense within the story of the book, but I also just wanted them to have like more moments in their romance journey that like weren't surrounding the past. Want to read next? I think I'm gonna go with If He Had Been With Me Next. I have just heard like literally so much about this book and I wanna see what everyone is talking about. I read the first chapter, aka to page three, and I feel like the opening sentence is really intriguing. It says, I wasn't with Finney on that August night, but my imagination has burned the scene in my mind so that it feels like a memory. We also get the title on page two. I love in books when we actually like read the title in a sentence. It says, if he had been with me, everything would have been different. So yeah, this first chapter is like very ominous. I read a page 91 and so far the plot is basically about Autumn and Finn and their mothers are best friends so they also used to be best friends like inseparable they do like holidays together just like so much together but as time goes on they grow apart and yeah I like it so far I feel like it feels very accurate to being a teenager which I feel like is kind of hard to write like there's so many like little nuances and emotions that I'm like yep relatable to when I was in high school yep relatable I kind of feel like the book is giving me more coming of age vibes than like explicitly romance even though like the the romance feelings are there. I read a page 142 and I think I'm gonna stop here for today. This book has been so far a pretty fast read, like I'm like flying through it. But yeah, I do really like it so far. I just want Autumn and Finn to be together so bad. They like obviously still care about each other, but I know they're in like high school and they're letting other emotions get in the way. Also, I don't know how this book is gonna end up being sad because nothing about it seems sad so far, but the first chapter was kind of like foreshadowing, very ominous. Something with chapter one is gonna come back later in the end for sure. Everything you said, they already knew. More or less. Well, here's something that you didn't know. Two of those special atomic bombs haven't gone off. So far, I've read a page 179 today and the character just came to a realization that I have been wanting her to come to for the whole book so far. So I'm really glad. But yeah, so far the book honestly has moved like a tiny bit slowly. It's like very slice of life, but I'm hoping that what just happened will kind of like kick the plot into like a little more action. <sighs> I just read a page 267 and uh, I feel like this book is kind of frustrating. Like it didn't become frustrating to me until the last like 40 or 50 or so pages. Basically, like I said, Finney and Autumn were like besties as kids and then they grew apart. But like, it's so obvious, it's so obvious that Finn still like cares about her, wants to be her friend. I get why they haven't like reconciled their friendship yet and stuff but i feel like there's not any like super super strong reason i guess i feel kind of frustrated that i want there to be like more conflict or for them to like reconcile their friendship All right, it's the next day. I have like 60 pages left, so I can definitely finish this book this morning. And I'm scared that we're getting near the end because I've heard the last like 20, 30 pages is the sad part and I'm not ready, but I'm also ready. I don't know, I'm scared. I just finished the book. I don't know how to feel. I did not expect it. Like there is foreshadowing for the ending, but I didn't think that what was gonna happen happened. And I'm just like kind of speechless. Honestly, I'm kind of angry. I'm actually angry. I didn't like the ending. I think I might be in the minority. It just felt like kind of random and like pointless. I don't know. It just felt abrupt. That's the word. As far as like, the entirety of the book outside of the ending. I did like it. It's very realistic, which I think is cool. It kind of gives me Sally Rooney vibes in a way, like romance, but also like very coming of age kind of feeling. I think I'm gonna say four stars. As far as our sadness scale, 
The book isn't sad until the ending, but the ending is really sad. I'm gonna say two tears out of five. Okay, it's a few hours later and I think I'm doing it. I think I'm gonna start a little life. I'm scared, but excited, but scared. Good morning. Also, my cat says hi. Say hello, Luca. Hello. Yesterday, I read page 70 in A Little Life, and so far, we're really just like getting to know all the characters. I really didn't know much about this book at all, minus like the massive trigger warning list, but it basically follows four college friends, and they live in New York. They're starting out in their careers, and so far, yeah, it's just very much like their life and like building up these characters and their personalities and their stories. I was like going back between the audiobook and the physical book, and I was like kind of zoned out for a second in the audiobook, and I forgot like which job went to which character so I looked it up and I read a character bio and got what I think is a huge spoiler so I'm really mad about that like I went looking for information on the characters so partially it's my fault but also in the article I read there was no spoiler warning like why wouldn't you have a spoiler warning I literally just wanted a character bio anyway me and Danny are gonna go to Starbucks to work and I'm gonna do some more reading there so I'll see you guys after Starbucks Hello, I'm back from Starbucks and it seems like Jude is going to be our main character. We know that Jude has had a really horrible childhood and past, but we don't know why. So I'm assuming we're going to delve into that. I just like watched so many like reading vlogs on this book and stuff to prepare myself because I know this book can mentally be a lot. So I know that so many bad things and traumatic things are coming and I feel like I'm just on edge, like questioning everything and everyone. Like who is going to hurt my boy Jude? Because I already care about him so much and... I just want the best for him and I'm not ready for him to go through any pain or to learn about his past pain. I ran to page 177 and that last chapter was hard to get through to be honest. Find out more about Jude's past and all of the trauma that he went through. We still don't know everything, but wow, he had a horrific childhood, horrific. I don't know, my eyes are like a little teary, but I feel like I'm more so just like in shock by how like devastating that chapter was for a child to go through that anyway i'm gonna stop here for today and i know the title of this video is reading sad books in a week but i honestly might read this book slowly over like two weeks or something like that i feel like i need to read take like happy breaks and pauses read so i might see you in a few days when i've read more because yeah like i said i'm gonna read slowly which i would recommend if anyone reads this book just because it's a lot to process I just read a page 361 and we get the title. Jude is saying he wished he could go back in time to where he had never met a certain person. And it says, he had wanted to vanish then, to close his eyes and reel back time before he had ever met blank. He would have kept living his little life. He would have never known the difference. And I actually looked up the meaning of the title and there's an interview with the author where she says, the title is meant to shape shift as the reader moves deeper into the shadows of this book. And it's indeed alluded to in different ways, but really I meant it literally. We have such small lives, all of us. And this is a story of one of those lives. And I had never thought about the title that way. That's a really cool way that the author meant it, that as much as we are like engrossed and fully invested in Jude's story, he is just one person on this whole Earth, he is just one little life and we all are one little life. Before I had read the author's meaning for the book, I had kind of developed my own interpretation of the title. My own interpretation was that Jude lives a very little life, not a big, full, happy life. Because of Jude's trauma and his past and everything he's gone through, in a lot of ways he's not really living, he's just surviving. I just finished page 386 and that was a hard chapter to get through. Jude is such an amazing person, but he will never ever believe that about himself. This chapter was definitely the epitome of we accept the love that we think we deserve. I just want the world for Jude, but I know that he has to believe that he deserves good things in life before he will be able to accept and seek out good things for himself.
I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm at my parents' house. If you've noticed that my background has changed, that is why. Anyway, kind of a random thought that I just had is that Jude is the main character of the book, but we still follow his friends at different points throughout the book. And at first I was curious why the author would choose for us to follow multiple characters instead of just focusing on our main character, Jude. And I think following other characters really works to like really emphasize Jude's extreme trauma. The other characters in Jude's life have been through hardships, but not in the way that Jude has, not even close to the way that Jude has. Jude's life and his pain is like incomparable to the people around him. And I think that like, like I said, like further highlights his trauma, but also shows kind of how alone he is and his like extreme trauma because no one else in his life can understand that. I am driving and trying not to cry <laughs> so I can see where I'm literally driving, like keep my eyes on the road, but Jesus Christ, this book is, it's harrowing. Like when I'm reading it, I feel like I'm kind of trying to stay as numb as possible just because there are some horribly, horribly traumatic things that happen in this book and I feel like I can't cry like every other page or I won't be able to get through it. So yeah, I feel like when I'm reading it, I'm not really crying, but then the second I stop and like digest what I just read, it really hits how much this person has gone through, especially the parts of what Jude has gone through as a child is disgusting. It's disgusting and I don't know, like I feel like sick. I've heard some people say that this book is like trauma porn, like it's like traumatizing just for like shock value and not really for any other purpose besides that. And I've heard other people say it's like incredibly written, an amazing book. And I kind of feel like both of those sides are true for me. Like there are parts where I'm like, is it beneficial for me and my mental health to be reading something this graphic? But then there are other parts where I'm like, wow, this is an incredible book. I care about the characters so much. There are like bits of happiness and hope. I feel like I'm getting such, such a deeper and better understanding of trauma and what other people have gone through and continue to go through. And so I don't know, I feel very like love hate for this book in the sense that it's like very uncomfortable and disturbing and heartbreaking and devastating for me to read. So I instinctually just want to close it and never look at it again because I don't want to feel those emotions. But then the other part of me is like, it is an incredible book that I almost don't want to look away from because I care about Jude so much and want to understand him and his whole story. The next section is called the happy years and I hope these years are happy. Update, the years were kind of happy for brief moments, but there was also so much hardship in those years. But I guess they were the happiest years Jude has had. This section also ended with the part that I spoiled for myself and I am not ready for the aftermath of what just happened. Anyway, I'm on to part six. I'm on the last section, Lisbonard Street, which is also the name of the first section. So we have come full circle and here's my reaction to the very end. I finished the book. I have never ever in my life read anything like this book before. It was a lot, a lot, but also really beautiful in a weird, tragically devastating way. And I don't know, I feel like the ending is just a really delayed hitting me now. So I might take like 10 minutes and then I'll see you guys. How to review this book. I honestly don't even know where to begin. If I had to describe this book in one word, it would be devastating, <laughs> absolutely devastating. I watched Jack Edwards reading vlog of reading this book and I think he put it really well when he said that he felt that this book was a masterpiece, but he would also recommend it to absolutely no one. And I feel similarly in the sense that it is so triggering. There's so much trauma. I don't think you can really know how this book is gonna affect you until you start it, especially because a lot of the trauma can be fairly graphic, detailed descriptions. At the beginning of reading this book, I asked you guys on Instagram, do you think the emotional pain is worth reading this book? And I think like 70% of you said yes. And I would also say yes to that question for myself now that I've finished it but I don't know that it's gonna be a yes for everyone. It's definitely not gonna be a yes for everyone. It feels weird to describe this book as beautiful, but I don't really know what else to describe it in the sense that it's like heartbreakingly, devastatingly beautiful. We get so much sadness, so much trauma, but there are these like sprinkles of hope throughout that almost make it more sad in a way because just when you think that there might be hope for Jude, 
it's ripped away and something just unforgivingly sad happens again to him. The book is so powerful and there's something about following a character through his entire life that makes that character feel so real. It's so weird to me that I'm now like out of this story and out of this world forever. Like that feels so bizarre. I've just spent 800 pages with these characters and also a lot of times in longer books, which by the way, I think this is officially the longest book I have ever read in my life. I sometimes question like, is the length necessary? Did it need to be that long? And in this case, I would say yes, 100% yes. I think every page mattered and was such an integral part of Jude's story, whether it was a big or small moment, big or small thoughts. I think I've already said this, but I have truly never ever in my life consumed anything like this book and 100% five stars. It feels weird to even give a rating. I don't know why. And also five tears on our sadness rating. I still feel like my brain is so jumbled. It's like, I don't even know what to fully think. Anyway, with that, um, I will be reading happy books for the foreseeable future. I enjoyed this video, but I 1000% need an emotional break because this book was very emotionally draining. I had like literal physical headaches at points. All right, see you guys in my next video.